Now we're in the second section of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and uh, we're going to read from verses 6 to 12 and I've put over that section this heading easy to be understood. You'll get that expression in verse number 9. Easy to be understood. Let's read verse 6. Now brethren if I come unto you speaking with tongues what shall I profit you except I shall speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine. And even things without life giving sound whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise you, except you utter by t- the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For you shall speak into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. Even so, ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. So here we come to the next section, and it's all about ease of understanding, and yet there's this great emphasis, isn't it? The reason that you need to understand what's being taught and said is for the edifying of the church. Now I must say, though this chapter is particularly about the gift of prophecy and tongues and the use of them in the early church, there are principles we have to pick up and we need to be very, very aware of them. And we've thought about them already in the first two sections, or the first section divided into two parts. That is the principle that anything where the word of God is handled and spoken should be for the edification, the exhortation and the comfort of God's people. Second principle we're going to learn here is there needs to be Bible teaching in our day that is easy to be understood. There's no point in going away from a gathering or listening to a meeting and someone says, well, that was deep, uh, but I don't really have a clue what the man was talking about because the man was far more intelligent than me and he used language I didn't understand and he used terminology I couldn't get my head around and, well, I just really didn't get much from it. That, that won't benefit you. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't use Bible language and you shouldn't raise people's height, sights. And my dad always used to say uh, you should challenge people. Uh, don't always uh, make sure that, you know, that those who are interested go away and study and dig and try and uh, learn for themselves. So it's good to challenge people. It's good to, to, to raise their, their, their expectations. But we have to do it in a way that people can understand. So these verses are teaching that very, very clearly. In verse 6... We have three things again. Um, oh, sure, sorry, it's four things, isn't it, in verse 6. He says, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you? What's the benefit of me coming to you speaking in an unknown language that you don't, uh, you're not able to understand? Well, he said, it, it might be that I come to you with a revelation, knowledge, prophesying or doctrine. Now, they're very interesting things to think about. You see, the the four things there are really very much linked. It might be hard to just distinguish between them. A revelation. Well, that's when God reveals something that has has not been known in the past. And that's a wonderful thing. Paul received a revelation. John on the Isle of Patmos received the revelation of Jesus Christ. Great revelation in Scripture. Knowledge. Well, I personally think the gift of knowledge, and you probably heard me talk about this in chapter 12, is was the ability to retain what had been revealed by the prophet. So you didn't have the Bible written down at this stage. It was partially complete. So the gift of knowledge had the ability to, 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 to retain it and to recall it. It's a wonderful thing, the gift of knowledge. Now, we, you don't have the gift of knowledge today, but you have a Bible. And you have to work out your Bible and you have to study your Bible and you have to learn your Bible so that you can uh, you basically provide ammunition for the Spirit of God to use so that you can preach and teach or share the Word of God with others. Prophesying. Well, prophesying is again very similar to Revelation. Uh, it, it, it's revealing truth. It's bringing men and women into an understanding of God's words and God's ways. It's a great thing. And doctrine. Well, that's the word that really is often, tra- we would translate it as teaching. 
It's truth. Isn't it wonderful that when God's people gather, when this book is opened, there is a revelation. It's, it's in this book now. It's completed. There is knowledge. It's in this book now. It's completed. There's prophecy. It, it's in this book now. It's available to us. There's doctrine. It's all in here. That's why this is going to move from prophecy to teaching in our day and generation. But he says in verse 7, I want to talk to you about the distinctive sound that you hear. Now, when I was a boy, I played in a silver band. I loved it. You'd say I was blowing my own trumpet. Well, I didn't play a trumpet, actually. I played a cornet, which is slightly smaller. And I loved playing in the band. But you know, when you were learning to play the cornet, you would get it off note and off key and drive your parents mad. And people down the street could hear you screeching away as you played it. Why? What Paul is saying is that even when you come to lifeless things, you know, things without life giving sound is, you know, instruments and, 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 and the banging of a drum and, and the hitting of, the, of a biscuit tin and all the things you probably did when you were a child. He says, whether it's a pipe or a harp, unless there's a distinction in the sound, you won't know what's being piped or harp. What he's saying is you wouldn't even tell the tune. You know, some people, when they sing, you would hardly know what tune they're singing. And then there are other people who are very melodious and, and it's wonderful to hear them sing. And, and you play an instrument and if you're off key and you're playing the wrong notes, you wouldn't know what the tune is. I remember my father-in-law saying to a man, what tune is that? He said, that must be a modern tune. I don't really know it. Well, he says, can't get much more modern than this. I'm making it up as I'm going along. Well, some people are like that when it comes to music. But what the apostle is saying, he says, there needs to be a clear, distinct sound so that you can understand what's being said. So it is with the teaching of God's word. So it was with prophecy in the days of the early church. For if, verse 8, if the trumpet gives an uncertain sound, now he's moving on from music to military procedure. He says if the trumpet gives an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the, the battle? If you'd lived in the days of the Israelites, you went back to Numbers, is it chapter 10, and you'd find there were silver trumpets and they had to sound and certain lengths of notes and certain times and certain rhythms so that people would know was the camp stopping or was it moving were there enemies what, what was the there was this distinct sound he was using these illustrations of music recognizing the tune recognizing the music or recognizing the instruction now that kind of fits in with encouragement you'd be encouraged you know sometimes music soothes you sometimes music thrills you sometimes music stimulates you to get up and do something sometimes music can even instruct you guide you so he's saying when the word of God is taught it should be clear you should recognize what's being said it should give a distinct message because that was exactly what the trumpet was expected to do in a military situation and so he says to them you need to understand this principle of how God's word is communicated effectively in words that are easy to be understood. Now we're going to pick that expression up in the next recording and finish off this subsection of 6 to 12 the next time that we have a Bible teaching video. Thanks again for your company.